Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. Today we'll dive into the wind turbine shaft and gearboxes, the backbone of power transmission in these massive machines. The shaft connects the turbine blades to the shaft and gearbox, transferring the rotational energy from the wind into usable mechanical power. These are critical components so let's break down how these shafts are made step by step. So let's begin. First, material selection is crucial. Wind turbine shafts are typically made from high strength material such as low alloy steel and etc. These materials offer excellent fatigue resistance, toughness and corrosion resistance which are essential for withstanding the extreme forces and harsh environments these shafts operates in. These steel slabs or plates are made from steel manufacturers such as U.S. Steel in United States. There are so many companies that can produce metal slabs. The raw material is first cut into suitable sized pieces to prepare it for forging. Ever wonder how the thick steel slabs, sometimes over 300 mm thick and above, are cut clean and precisely in heavy industries? This tool right here is an ox fuel cutting machine mounted on a track guided carriage. It's a powerful setup designed specifically for flame cutting or what's commonly called ox fuel cutting. The process uses two key gases, a fuel gas, propane or natural gas to provide heat and pure oxygen, which not only intensifies the flame, but also chemically oxidizes the steel, essentially burning through it. That jet of oxygen is what actually does the cutting. Once the metal reaches its ignition temperature, the oxygen stream rapidly oxidizes, forming iron oxidized, which is then blown away from the cut. The best part of this is that it's simple to set up and operate, making it a go-to method in both field jobs and fabrication shops worldwide. Once material is selected, the forging process begins. This is where raw steel is transformed into a rough shaft shape. The steel billets are heated to around 1,200 degrees Celsius to reach malleable state. The heated billet is then placed into a die and forged under immense pressure, sometimes as high as 10,000 tons, to form the rough shaft shape, 
Repeated hammering crushes the coarse grain and stretches them along the shaft axis. This directional grain flow increases the strength right where it matters the most, which is along the length of the shaft. Hammering helps close up voids, shrink porosity, and seal micro cracks that may have formed during casting. This is critical for components under high stress. By reducing internal discontinuities, the metal becomes denser and more compact, which directly translate to higher strengths. Fatigue is a silent killer in rotating machinery. A well-forged shaft with refined grain and few flaws can withstand millions of load cycles without cracking. As metal is forged, its internal dislocations are realigned. This enhances both toughness and ductility, making the shaft more resilient under impact or overload. Finally, all that hammering helps distribute alloying elements evenly, creating a more consistent material throughout the shaft. The billet is roughly shaped to include the main body and critical features like flanges for rotor and gearbox connections. This process aligns the grain structure, significantly improves the shaft strengths and fatigue life.
After forging, the shaft undergoes heat treatment to fine-tune its mechanical properties. Different heat treatment process can achieved by varying the time of heating, holding at a temperature, rate of cooling, cooling agent, and etc. Here is the example of quenching, where a shaft is rapidly cooled in oil or water to increase its hardness. Through quenching, the metal becomes harder and more brittle and significantly increases wear, vibration, and corrosion resistance. Next, the shaft goes through the rough machining where it's placed on a large lathe to remove excess material and shape it into a basic cylindrical form. Once the rough shape is established, the shaft moves on to precision machining. And that's all for today. From raw steel to a precision engineered powerhouse component. That's how shafts and gears are made. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more engineering insights. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.